I'm Ray Ortega, and welcome to my How to Start a Podcast video series, where I'm gonna teach you how to start a podcast that you can grow, but is ready to be heard by everybody right now. The goal of these videos is to actually get you recording and publishing, getting your podcast in the podcast directories, ready to be subscribed to and listened to by the audience that is looking for your content, and to get you doing that sooner than later. One of the hardest parts of podcasting is deciding you want to start a podcast and then going from that to actually seeing your podcast in something like the Apple Podcast app. After you finish these videos and you've actually started your podcast, your first episode is published, then you can go over to thepodcasterstudio.com and podcastersroundtable.com, two websites and podcasts that I host all about podcasting because there are an infinite number of things to learn when it comes to podcasting, but those aren't the things you need right now. These videos are what you need right now to make it a solid foundation to build upon. Then you can go over there, dig deep, learn how to build your audience, monetize if you want to, grow your gear, you name it. It's all contained in hundreds of episodes over on those two websites. Also, The Podcaster Studio Episode 101 is an even deeper dive into all the topics that you're gonna get in these videos. But in this video series, we wanna focus and get you started. So in this very first video, I wanna talk about three real basic but core elements of your podcast, and that is your topic, the name of your podcast, and its format. Your topic, what is your podcast going to be about? Ideally, you'll be able to describe your podcast in one or two sentences. Try that. Write down one or two sentences to describe what the topic of your podcast is about. Once you are able to do that, you'll have a basic description, which we'll use later on in our RSS feed. We'll get into that. Don't worry. To give us our description, that thing that will appear in Apple Podcasts and other podcasting directories. So why one or two sentences, and why am I starting with this? Why is it so important? Well, this is the basis for your entire podcast, and you wanna build upon your topic, and you need to know that to go on to the next step. But one or two sentences is all about being specific, very specific. Not only will you easily be able to describe your podcast to someone who asks, and you can get that done quickly, but knowing specifically how to describe your podcast using keywords, but the most important words that describe your topic. That topic has to be focused enough to get it down to one or two sentences, but this is how you're going to be found in podcast directories and even on your website, which is something we'll get into later on through Google and other search engines. This way you can stand out because there are a lot of podcasts. There will be more in the future. Some of them will be in your same niche, but it doesn't matter. When people are searching, whether it's on a search engine like Google, or even in a podcast directory, which is its own search engine, the more specific you are about your topic, the more likely that someone will find you when they're in there searching for a new podcast. So write down one or two sentences, and when you're done with that, congrats because you have the very first piece of getting your podcast started. We'll use this in descriptions, and at any time, you can actually update that and change that as you develop a more robust, specific description. So when you're specific about your topic, people will know exactly what they're subscribing to. They'll get a general idea about what the entire podcast and each episode is going to be about, and they're more likely to share it with other people who they know have the same interest as they do. And of course, this is just best practices based on my own experience. Your topic can be as broad as you want, but when you're really broad, people don't really find you because they're not looking for just a podcast about anything. They're generally looking for something very specific, and that'll help them find you. Being specific, drilling down, being niche is really where the power in podcasting lies, especially for the average podcaster, someone that's not coming to podcasting with an audience already. So you're trying to be found amongst a sea of a lot of other content, and you might not already have an audience to bring and say, here's the podcast. You might just be starting a podcast, which a lot of us did in the beginning, 
and we need to be found by our topic. The name of your podcast. What is your podcast going to be called? One of my shows, The Podcaster Studio, is a podcast about podcasting. Hopefully that you get some general idea that it's about podcasting when you hear the title, but the best way to know this is to go ask a stranger. And this tip comes from my friend and co-host of Podcasters Roundtable, Dave Jackson. He says when you're thinking of the name for your podcast, whether that's one name, three names, five names, take those, go out to a stranger and ask them, what do you think this podcast is about? And that will really give you some great feedback whether people understand the topic of your podcast. Imagine if your title accomplished this same thing in three to five words. When someone heard the title of your podcast or they read it, they knew immediately or at least had some idea what they're going to get from a podcast. This might be your only opportunity in a lot of cases to get someone to either read your description to find out more or to actually do what you really want them to do, click play and listen to your podcast to see if they want to subscribe and become a regular listener. Because when they're searching for podcasts, they may only see the title, whether that's in text or whether that's on text on your artwork, which we'll get into as well. So the title of your podcast should be on your artwork, but if they only see the title, is it something that they're going to say, yes, I'm interested in that topic, I wanna go further and actually find out if I wanna subscribe and listen to this podcast. Now this is just best practice based on my last decade of podcasting. You can be as broad as you want, as generic as you want with your title. You might wanna have some fun with it. I'll talk later on about how to sort of help that if that's the case when it comes to being in podcast directories and being found. I'll go deeper into how to help a more general uh, title for your podcast. However, another good tip, something I like to do, something you'll certainly want to have, which is a URL for your podcast. Whether you have a website that you build for yourself or not, you want to have a URL. So go out to somewhere where you can purchase a domain name and take the name that you're considering for your podcast, type it in and add .com because the default is generally .com. And if that's available, that may be a great way for you to decide on one name versus another. If the .com is available and the other one is not, I'm probably gonna take the one with the .com because one thing that people are going to remember, probably even better than they remember your name in the beginning, is the name of your podcast. And they're gonna type that in when they wanna go get more information about your show. Stuff that's not included in every episode or maybe it's not in the description or maybe they wanna contact you or maybe you have some links in your show notes that you've referred people to. A website is a great place to do that. And whether you have a website or not, you can put your domain, you can link that to some other site that gives people more information, whether you build it or not. We'll talk more about that. But that may be one way of helping you name your podcast, whether the .com is available or not. Format. This is usually where I talk about audio versus video, but for this tutorial series, I am focusing only on audio. One reason is because audio has become the dominant format in podcasting, but there are other reasons as well, such as it's easier to create. Not to be confused with easy, but it is easier than video. It can be less expensive. Hosting video files can be really expensive. It can be less time consuming recording video, setting it all up, and editing video can also take four to five to six times as long as producing an audio only episode. So I want you to get really good at an audio podcast. And if you decide later on that you have time and the ability to also create video, that's something to consider. But if you are thinking about doing a video podcast, you can get in touch with me and I can help you with some of the details on that. In this case, we're talking about audio only. Another reason we're focusing on audio and why it's become the predominant format in podcasting, probably most importantly, is because audio is easier to consume. With video, you have to be looking at the video for the most part. You know, if you're doing video, it should be for the reason that you actually need to see what you're talking about. With audio, people can take it in their car, they can do it while they are working out, there's just so many more things and more chances for someone to consume audio 
it's easier to consume, and that's why it's also becoming or has become the primary format for podcasting. So I want to dial that in for you here. Consider audio first, and then you can build in other elements such as live streaming and video later on. Another element of format is deciding, are you going to do a show by yourself or with co-hosts, or maybe you're going to do guests in the form of interviews. So there are things to consider. If you do a solo show by yourself, it's easier. You're always on your schedule, and you don't have to rely on someone else to show up for the recording and have to align two schedules. That said, when you have a co-host or several co-hosts, you can divide the workload. So someone could do the editing, someone could do the recording. You know, you could split topics across different co-hosts. So it's a lift that is not as heavy when you have other people. But just something to consider. And if you're gonna do interviews, that is going to maybe determine some of the gear or software that you use, which we'll get into that in a future video. But you want to think about how am I gonna set this up? Because when you're creating that here, when you're building your podcast, it's important to know, is it just me? Is it me and someone else? How am I gonna set that up? Is it me and guests? So just something to decide right up front. You can always, always change that. You can always add in a co-host later if you want. Uh, it's harder to add in someone, I would say, after they've gotten used to just you. It's also harder to go solo after they've gotten used to, to other people. So something to consider there as well. I have mixed in interviews into my solo show and that has done really well. So think a little bit about your format. It'll help you plan these other stages that we're going to talk about in these other videos.